Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt ramp deck that's using some of the same concept I tried in the mono green Nissa deck, but now we're expanding our color range, adding black and green to give us some powerful cards. Go for the throat in black as removal, and then red offers a tally, primal conqueror at the top end, and some other neat toys. Of course, Soul of Windgrace, another main reason to go in these three colors. So one of the new cards is Nissa Resurgent Animist, three mana three three with landfall making one man of any color, and if we can enable it a second time, then we get to reveal cards off the top of our deck until we reveal an elf or elemental card and put it into our hand. And the elves and elementals include additional copies of Nyssa. We also have one Galissa Sunslayer, which is pretty well positioned in the new meta game where enchantments are on the rise. Galissa as a 3-3 with first strike and death touch can be a nightmare for creature decks to deal with, and then once it connects it can also blow up opposing enchantments, which is great, or potentially draw extra cards. And then we also have some elementals in the form of Titan of Industry, which is now back in style as well. 7 mana, 7-7, seven, seven, with Reach Trample, can make a 4-4 four, four when it enters, maybe blow up an artifact or enchantment, put a shield counter somewhere or gain some life. So very versatile top-end threat that we can find with Nyssa, just by playing some fetch lands, for instance. If we play our Riveteer's Overlook with a Nyssa in play that enables landfall twice, satisfies Nyssa's condition to surge for an elf or elemental and put it in hand, gaining some life in the process, and then Riveteer's Overlook is also perfect alongside Soul of Windgrace, which is another way of enabling Nyssa if we have a land in the graveyard, and we can do so pretty easily of course with our Overlook, which automatically ends up in our graveyard, so these two are great together as well. And then we also have the uh, Cycling Land Proving Ground, which we can cycle to draw and then maybe later get back with Soul of Windgrace, and there's even three copies of Seed of Hope in our deck, one man instant to mill two cards, put one permanent from among those into our hands, and then we gain two life. The life gain can come in handy against the red burn decks in the format, and then it can also just smooth out our draws by finding key cards at the right time, maybe find our 7 mana finishers in the late game, and then by milling a few cards we can also maybe put a land in graveyard for Soul of Windgrace, because whenever it enters a battlefield or attacks we may put a land card from our graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under our control, and if we search up our Riveteer's Overlook from the graveyard it will enter, sacrifice itself right away, get a basic, a game one life, so that also has excellent synergy in multiple ways, and then we can also potentially discard land to enable Soul of Windgrace's various abilities, maybe gaining three or drawing a card if we discard a land, can also make it indestructible and tap it if we pay it two and a black and discard a land card. And then another great combo with Nyssa is a turn 4 Invasion of Zendikar to search up two basics. If we manage to transform the three defense counter battle, we also get an Awakened Skyclave. Also counts as a land, so it can enable landfall, although there's a very short window where we can use that mana in the end of combat step, basically. So we won't be able to use a floating mana from landfall from Nyssa and the Awakened Skyclave in our second main phase, but can still maybe use it to cast an instant like Go for the Throat at two mana or main cheap interaction to destroy a non-artifact creature. Also have Armored Scrap Gorger, which can maybe set up a turn 3 4 drop, like Invasion of Zendikar or Soul of Windgrace, especially nice after turn 1 Overlook, and then can also act as Graveyard Hate and eventually pick up 3 extra power after exiling enough cards. And then we're also playing the full set of Topiary Stomper, which can also curve into the Invasion of Zendikar, which is popularized in the five-color domain decks. And then Stomper is enabled right away with seven lands in play, can attack and block now as a 4-4 with Vigilance, threatening to transform our Invasion of Zendikar in Skyclave. And then we'll have plenty of mana to cast our seven drops, such as a Tally, which can also provide a ton of value when it enters a battlefield, can transform into the Primal Sickness, a poison threat that can close out the game in a single attack potentially, and then tighten another great Great 7 drop that we can curve into, and Cogline Yadaro at 6 mana also has the flexibility of discarding it from our hand for 4 mana to take out an artifact or enchantment and draw a card, put Kogla back in our deck and shuffle, and then we can also cast it for 6 mana as a 7-7 seven, seven that can either come into play with Trample and Haste, or it can fight a creature we don't control, so a ton of flexibility there as well. And then we've got some nice 5 drops with Vorinclex, can search up 2 forests when it enters, including our Proving Ground, which has the forest subtype as well. And then for 8 mana we can transform it into the Grand Evolution, which can also close out a game pretty quickly. 
And then we've got a Luca at 5 mana, which also has the flexibility of casting it for 4 mana thanks to its completed ability. So maybe a turn 2 Scram Gorger can set up a turn 3, a Luca Bound to Ruin, which can then plus 1 to add 2 mana to cast on uh, creature spells. So that's another way of ramping into an early Titan or a Tally. And then the minus 4 is also very nice with all these large creatures on the battlefield to deal damage with, and can also generate additional 3-3 beast tokens. And then our mana base needs access to a ton of basic lands to search up with Overlook or Invasion of Zendikar and Topiary Stomper, so we don't want to run out of basics to search up. So we've got six forests, two mountains, and a swamp. And then the channel lands also have great synergy with Soul of Wind Grace, since we can channel them and still get them back from the graveyard. And then just a couple additional dual lands to kind of round things out here. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. And we are on the draw, and we've got a decent hand. Go for the throw it on two by fetching a swamp. And then we'll have our fetch land to synergize with Soul of Wind Grace. Seed of Hope could also put a landing graveyard potentially. Put on the green white with Naturalist. That one I'm happy to take out. Make sure we play green source so we can play Stomper next turn and then curve it into maybe an invasion on four. Another Naturalist plus maybe some other two mana enchantment companion to draw. Okay. Stomper get a mountain, so we have double red for Luca. Calyx, yep, that one's good. Provides a plus one counter with each enchantment entering. And then now Reign of Truth can pump up the Naturalist even more. Now our deck is packed with answers to enchantments at least, so hopefully we can find a Glissa or our Titan of Industry soon. For now, Invasion, Enable Stomper, Threaten to Transform it, and we can still cast our Seed of Hope. I doubt our opponent's jumping with Calyx. So we'll pass. Seed of Hope is an instant. So Naturalist, an 8-8 once again. And Audacity, that one's definitely a problem since uh, they can now copy their enchants thanks to Calyx. Do never go for the throw to punish it. And another counter on Naturalist means they can attack past our two 4 fours. And another companion. Okay, at least Seed of Hope can gain two life, so maybe that can catch them off guard. Just a naturalist attacking. Let's see what we can find. Probably go for Nissa here. And then we cannot trade, so I'll take the damage. Fall to three. Calyx triggers, and they can copy Companion or another Reign of Truth. Another look out the draw. So, what are our options? If I play Nissa, can play a land, enable a landfall, make a mana, Soul of Wind Grace, get back a fetch land. So then we have one, two, three, four, five mana left with a Skyclave, so I could still play a Luka afterwards. And we would most likely find a Titan of Industry or maybe a Glissa with Nissa. Okay, that seems worthwhile. Let's go for it. And we found a Titan of Industry, so we can play that next turn. Just need to survive another turn. And we can play Luca. Could have maybe attacked with 4-4 uh, four, four first, but not gonna risk it. So we've got 5 damage to distribute, so we can take out Naturalist. That way they don't have a Trampler left, that's probably the safest. And attack with Stomper if they trade for Calyx, I'm happy. Okay, now they do get Reign of Truth to trigger again, so if they have another Audacity left, we could be dead. But 
but if we can untap with Titan, we're in decent shape. Visitor, okay. Opponent may be looking to exile one of our creatures. Yep, there's the ossification. Don't think the companions are attacking this turn. Soul of Wind Grace exiled. And then we'll have to chum block, and I think we keep Nissa alive since we can maybe still synergize with uh, Soul of Wind Grace once we free it with Titan of Industry. Go for the throat was a decent draw too. So let's add mana. Cast Titan. Destroying the ossification. And probably want to gain 5 life as opposed to making a 4-4 four -four in case they can somehow give their creature trample or flying with a Cotilda. Get our fetch land which will trigger Nissa a bunch. And get another Nissa's backup. Okay. So no need to go for the throat now. Can keep it up at instant speed. Could play a backup Luka. And then take out some more creatures. That's maybe not a bad idea. So now we get to distribute 7 damage. So 5 to Calyx. And then maybe 2 to the Visitor. Or we can take out the 2 Companions. To shrink down the Portrait as well. And we can attack with Skyclave and Nissa perhaps too. Opponent takes it. And this triggers when they cast an enchantment, so I might want to take it out now. Okay. We're in a decent spot now, I would say. And if Soul of Wind Grace attacks, we can potentially get another Titan of Industry with Nyssa. This is definitely one of the matchups I had in mind when uh, building this Junt deck. So we can cycle Proving Grounds, since we'll be able to trigger Nyssa just by attacking with Soul of Wind Grace. And how about an Itali? Can add mana first. Finding Kogla. And a Rite of Harmony first, so we get to draw a card as well. And how about a fight? Yeah, this is pretty brutal. Get to draw, and our opponent has seen enough. We can attack all out, and then get a couple more triggers with Soul of Windgrace, enabling Nyssa, finding another Titan of Industry. And there we have it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's missing. A double green for Stomper. That's the main concern. Can we still keep? Pretty likely to find another green source and then Stomper into Invasion's one of our better starts. So I'll try it. Well, let's see what we're up against. A red green. Turn one Fusling. It's an aggressive deck. And Overlook was a good draw. So get another green source. And then Stomper into Invasion as live. Soul of Windgrace also great with our fetch land. And a Beast Callers next. Okay. So Stomper get another red source, so we have double red for Kogla. Another Fusling grows Beast Caller. And make that two. Alright, Beast Caller is getting kind of scary. And Akumano is next. So let us go for Invasion. Play a land to enable Stomper. And our opponent can chump to prevent us from getting the 4-4 here. 
which is what I'll do. Otherwise, the extra mana could have been able to go for the throat in the opponent's turn. So do we trade for Beast Caller? I think I just block Fusling. And if they want to finish off Stomper, that's fine. Play with fire, that's okay. Can play Soul of Wind Grace and still go for the Throat, or can go for Kogla and Yudaro. Lots of great options. If I go for Soul of Wind Grace, three mana left, could also Stomper and just try and block the Beast Caller. That may work out. Kogla fighting Beast Caller could maybe bind us back if uh, our opponent has like a Lightning Strike to finish off Kogla moves counter to Fusling, and then we could be dead. So that seems a bit risky. So then fighting Fusling is maybe safer. And that's also an option. Getting Soul of Wind Grace going could be better. Can develop our mana, gain some life. And then if we can trade for Beast Caller and kill Fusling, or the other way around, then they don't have a place to necessarily put the counters from Beast Caller. Although I guess they get another 2 2 here. We'll see. Opponent attacks. Yeah, maybe we just block Etching, and then the plan is to take out Fusling with Go for the Throat, take 4, and then next turn Kogla fights Beast Caller. Don't want to moving the counters from Beast Caller. And our opponent will need a lightning strike to finish off Soul of Wind Grace. So that happens. So yeah, Kogla last turn could have worked out poorly if they had the lightning strike in hand already. But now I feel pretty confident. Can even play Luka, add mana. Just double checking here. And then three, four, five, six. Yeah, that still casts a Kogla. And now there's no creature left to receive the counters from Beast Caller. So even if Lightning Strike happens, it's not the end of the world. Although at this point they would probably point the Lightning Strike upstairs, hoping to burn us out. Okay, Boseju or Rockfall Veil. Vale. That's fine. Can grab a Proving Ground even. We can get one point of damage in. Next turn they can bring it back. But double stomper will stabilize us nicely. So we can make a beast. Play double stomper. Don't have many lands left in our deck at this rate. And it's good hit for 7, put them to 12. It's probably okay. Don't think we need to transform our invasion. We've got 3 blockers, so bringing back Squee doesn't accomplish much. And now we can minus 4 Luka to clear a path. Sadly, cannot damage battles with it. And no need for Vorinclex. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems promising. Scrap Gorger into Soul of Wind Grace. Could use a fetch land. Otherwise, we're still ramping with uh, Stomper, Vorinclex to find more forests. Up against the red aggro. Well, being on the play certainly helps. We'll see if they can take out Scramp Gorger. If not, Soul of Wind Grace, probably a better blocker than Stomper early on. Either way, we're looking at Vorinclex on the following turn. Adversary we can block. So yeah, Scramp Gorger doing a great job here. Mm. 
no immediate value. But it's still a 5-4 creature that our opponent needs to deal with. And if it trades for a creature and a burn spell, I'm pretty happy. Okay, it's going to be a Furnace Reigns to steal Soul of Wind Grace. Not a card you see very often in red decks, but incredibly effective here. Could be scary if they have another one for Vorinclex. So yeah, that's next here. Play Vorinclex, get more forests. And keep both our creatures back. This does look like another Furnace Reigns incoming. It can be a nice finisher when facing Atraxa decks, admittedly. Steal their 7 drop before they get a chance to attack with it. Now a Rent's Resolve finds Feldon and a land. Those are fine. Okay, so don't think our opponent has any great attacks lined up. They're just going to send Feldon anyways. Yeah, I don't really want to take two, although if we block with, let's say, Soul of Wind Grace, our opponent gets to dig five cards deep, and then maybe finish off Soul of Wind Grace with a play with fire, so at that point may as well block with Vorinclex. And then we'll be prepared for another Furnace Reigns if we see the exile here. Koth, Fire of Resistance. Could also be effective. And that's what they chose. So this turn I could cycle Proving Ground and then get it back with Soul of Wind Grace after attacking and then still play a Stomper. That sounds reasonable, since Soul of Wind Grace is likely the card they're gonna take out with Koth. Okay. Play Stomper. And then we'll have seven lands in play for Stomper to block here. Next turn, Scram Gorger goes up to three power. Can likely transform our invasion as well. So not hating my position, but still want to be mindful of another Furnace Reigns. Vorinclex cost 8 mana to transform, so that's also a possibility next turn. We would first mill 10 cards and put up to 2 creature cards from those onto the battlefield, then distribute 7 counters and eventually fight everything. Another Swiss Spear. And a Koth, so they may take out Stomper instead of Soul of Wind Grace to try and push more damage. They could get in for 4, and then I only have 14 damage on the way back if Scrimgorger grows, but nope, Bonus still goes for Soul of Wind Grace instead. So now we still have to watch out for 1 mana instant, enabling Prowess, but even a play with Fire, growing Swiss Spear is not enough to finish off Vorinclex. Ooh, Nissa was a great draw too. So let's say we play Nissa. Play a land. And then Invasion will enable Nissa all the way. And find a Titan of Industry, which could gain some life back here. Although can't quite cast it right now. So let's go after Koth with Vorinclex, and Invasion we can maybe attack with both Stomper and Scrimgorger. Scrimgorger grows. And then I'm happy if we can take out Koth, get our 4-4, still have plenty of blockers back once we get our battle transformed. Then next turn we should be able to take over with Titan or a transformed Vorinclex. I guess double Furnace Reigns could be bad, but uh, I may be reading too much into it at this point. 
Alright, Furnace Rains on Vorinclax, and our opponent explodes, so they did have one left over, but we had plenty of blockers left. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Turn 2 Scrap Gorger can set up turn 3 Soul of Wind Grace, and then Seed of Hope can also enable it if we mill over land. Opponent on a plus 1 counter deck with Bond Warden. Could also be more of a human's deck. So, yeah, play Scram Gorger. And Ozolith points towards plus one counter synergies. And uh, Riveter's Overlook could be great with Soul of Wind Grace as well. But gotta play it first. So, we could keep up the indestructible ability as our opponent plays a Siege Veteran. Two counters on Bond Warden, and I go for the throw to draw. Okay, so start with Overlook. Attack with Soul of Wind Grace. Get back Overlook. And our mana is sorted now. Does our opponent attempt a double block? They don't. So in that case, probably want to see the hope first, see what we can find with it. Okay, those are both good. Cogline Didaro is an answer to the Ozolith. If we use the 4-man ability, Stomper I could also just cast now. But let's grab Cogla and then just go for the throat. The veteran now, before they get a chance to trigger it. And the green-white deck might also have some protection spells in place. And then, could always discard the cards to gain three here. Doubt that's gonna come up. And Ozolith grows Bond Warden, which we could also fight with Kogla. Not sure if Ozolith is the bigger concern. I guess having a 7 7 in play would be nice too. Opponent's gonna hang back. Let's exile their creature here to maybe grow Scram Gorger into a three powered creature. Okay, so yeah, just casting Kogla, taking out Bond Warden might be fine. Opponent gets to move counters to Skrelv. Or we can attack, make indestructible. But uh, yeah, taking out Bond Warden seems fine. Can just uh, play another fetch land here and tap Scrap Gorger. That's okay. And hope they don't have a protection spell in hand, although it kind of looks like they might. Yeah, Surge of Salvation. I guess also would have protected their Ozolith. So that's too bad. Now we don't have a great attack with Soul of Wind Grace. So we'll just have to wait. We're still progressing our board nicely. Hopefully we can find a Titan of Industry soon to blow up Ozolith. But the Bond Warden is now taking over the board. A Luka is nice. So if we attack with Soul of Wind Grace, they block with Bond Warden. I could play a Luka second main to try and finish it off, but of course there's still Skrelv to worry about. So probably just have to take out Skrelv first. And... Uh, could also channel Abandoned Mire, maybe to get back Luka if they take it out afterwards. Play our Planeswalker. So make sure we deal enough damage to Skrelv in case they had a way of putting counters on it. And then they probably use Skrelv on the Bond Warden in response. Okay. Can channel Abandoned Mire for just two mana since we control two legendaries. So won't be attacking here. But I'll gladly channel Abandoned Mire end of turn. Another Siege Veteran. One card left. 
Bond Warden now a 9-10. And make that an 11-12 now. No attacks. Okay, let us exile Skrelf. Channel Bandenmire, and at the very least we can get back a Stomper. Another Soul of Windgrace an option too, but Stomper seems good. Okay, go for the Throat. Great answer to the Bond Warden, even though they can move the counters onto the Siege Veteran afterwards. So do I really get to attack then is the question. Opponent is at 15. I can push essentially 8 damage. Maybe I'm better off just waiting and casting go for the throat end of turn. Yeah, let's just pass. Counters on Siege Veteran. So may as well take it out before it gets a chance to put more counters everywhere. And our opponent has seen enough. Next turn we can attack with all, and that likely gets us there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is a little sketchy. We only have the two lands at the moment. And uh, yeah, we really need to get up to four mana to cast our invasion and Soul of Windgrace. Double invasion is a bit redundant too. And the chances of Nyssa surviving and going into an invasion are pretty low. So let's take a mulligan. Okay, this is better. Got Scrap Gorge Rent. Go for the throat early. Glissa seems great. So then the question is between Luca and Kogla, which do we prefer? And uh, yeah, I think we keep Luca, something we can maybe play on turn four already off Scrap Gorger. And we already have Glissa, that's great against enchantments. Okay, up against Red Aggro on the draw. So we'll see if uh, our draw is still good enough. Don't have to play Scrap Gorger. Since we could just go for the throat now, good answer to Felden. And then Glissa can try and stabilize us. If we go for Scribe Gorger, it may or may not survive. And then Luca costs us two life as well if we want to play it for four mana. So I think just going for go for the throat is safer. Wait for them to attack so they cannot play another legendary Felden. But they might have a Squee that we want to take out instead. For now, Phoenix Chick. And a play with fire upstairs. If they play another burn spell, I may take out Swiss Spear over Felden. Alright, let's take out Felden, take three. And then hope they don't have a lightning strike for Glissa. Can play a lookout for four mana next turn either way, and then maybe play a scrap gorger afterwards using the plus one. Okay, invasion of Regatha, that's one damage. To Glissa, four to us. But we can hold off Swiss Spear thanks to first strike. So that's not too bad. And the festivities is another one damage. But yeah, Swiss Spear ain't going anywhere. Opponent's about to find out how First Rank and Death Dutch interact. We are down to five. So I don't want to play Luca for uh, two life here. That seems a bit dangerous. And uh, drawing cards with Glissa is also scary. Play Scrap Gorger. Then I guess we're attacking. If I pay one life, then we could die to a lightning strike next turn. So I guess we can remove counters of something that doesn't have any. Play with fire. Yeah, that gets us dangerously close to dead. Don't have any life gain at the ready here. So, still in a lot of danger. Foreign Clanks does have reach at least. I guess keeping Glissa back still makes sense if her opponent top decks Squee. So we have two blockers for Squee and the token. So I should maybe hang back for a turn. Could have been a reason to just uh, not use Scram Gorger and play an untapped land there. Epicure puts us to one. 
block Phoenix check. Still no life gain in sight. So now what? Need to get up to eight mana to transform Vorinclex, perhaps. So we're pretty close to that. Can play Luca. Add mana, play Stomper. Glissa can attack. So we're dead to a lot of burn spells here. Opponent gets a redraw of the blood token. Okay, keeping the suspense. Make sure to activate Scrap Gorger so we can eventually get it to 3 power. We also have a Seed of Hope, which could gain some life. And speak of the Devil. So, uh, let's see here. We can first attack with Vorinclex, Glissa, and Stomper. It's 10, 13. I guess if we just take out Epicure, we would have lethal. So, yeah, let's go for it. No need to transform Vorinclex after all. Attack all out. And there we have it, Exaxes. Let's not lose one life. And hang on to Seed of Hope just on the off chance our opponent was slow rolling a play with fire. But yeah, there we have it, so very close game against Monored. And uh, yeah, opponent did make some questionable decisions, although I don't know if it would have made a huge difference in the end. So yeah, close game here against Monoret, but overall very impressed by this Junt ramp deck. Seems like we have enough early game tools to hang with uh, aggressive decks, but at the same time we have a lot of late game, especially answers to enchantments, which are on the rise again after the banning of Invoke Despair. So the green-white enchantments deck has our number, and the five-color domain decks also have access to a lot of enchantment removal, like Ossification and Leyline Binding, so having plenty of answers to those can be important, with Glissa, Kogla and Hidaro, and and then we've got our Titan of Industry at the top end, which can all take out artifacts and enchantments. So that's the main question. Can we outgrind Atraxa in those domain decks? And I'm not quite sure. Haven't tested the matchup a whole lot. But otherwise, I'm definitely liking the look of this Junt ramp deck. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.